Okay, in this video we're going to pick up uh, where we left off in the previous one on multi-group path analysis using Amos. Uh, the example that I am uh, referring to actually comes from this article right here. Um, and we were comparing white and native Canadians in terms of um, their responses on a number of different measures and more specifically uh, uh, looking at differences in the relationships among these uh, measures uh, between the two groups. So the data is in summary form is coming from table one and table two. So we actually have data from each group um, in terms of the means and standard deviations and in terms of the correlations. Um, and the model that we were testing is actually this one right here. Um, and uh, this was actually tested in both groups, both uh, the, the uh, white Canadian and native Canadian groups. This was the final model for the native Canadian group. This was the final model for the white Canadian group. Um, so in terms of just the configuration of relationships, uh, the, you know, it looks like that there's differences between the two groups. But for this uh, demonstration, I'm basically uh, going to just compare the two groups in terms of the parameter estimates, assuming a common model. So, um, so we're just going to kind of pretend like uh, there's no differences in terms of the configuration of relationships between the groups. And we're only going to be testing for um, the presence of non-invariant uh, paths between the two groups. So the basic model that we have laid out is this one right here. And um, in my previous video, I demonstrated um, how you can test for non-invariants using uh, the, um, the multiple group analysis option. So really quickly, just as a little bit of a refresher, you'll notice that I've drawn out the basic model. Um, we have two groups that have been specified. We, we laid those two groups out using the manage groups option. And so, and then we imported the data um, for each group um, with their respective data sets. So uh, when we ran the basic multi-group, multiple group analysis, um, when you click on that, you're going to just kind of click through here, and you'll notice that it says parameter subsets. And so the first model includes only the structural weights, which are the path coefficients for um, within the model. So all the paths are being uh, constrained to equality um, um, between the groups for model one. Model two, uh, you're uh, constraining the paths to equality as well as the structural covariances, which includes this uh, double-headed arrow over here as well as the variances for uh, these two um, exogenous variables. Then model three builds on that one by uh, uh, being more restrictive by uh, requiring that the, um, the um, disturbance terms are um, fix our constraint to equality between the groups as well as the covariances uh, between the two groups. So I'm going to click on OK and when I uh, run calculate the estimates now I've got um, you know if I click on unconstrained and look in the two groups you can see oops let me click over here you can see that all of the estimates um, are allowed to vary between the groups and so the unconstrained model is a baseline model um, and so all of the uh, parameters within the model are freely estimated in each group. The structural weights model, um, basically when I click between the two uh, groups, you'll notice that the structural, uh, the uh, regression weights are constrained to equality between the group, two groups. So all of the other parameters, though, you'll notice uh, will, will change as we kind of go back and forth between the two groups. The structural covariances, um, we're going to capture this covariance here as well as the variances of these two variables. So under this particular option, when I click back and forth, you'll notice that these values don't change as well as the values of the uh, path coefficients, whereas um, the disturbances and the covariances uh, between the disturbances are allowed to, to, um, to vary between the groups. Then for the structural residuals model, when I click back and forth, you'll notice that no parameters are allowed to be uh, freely estimated between the groups. So they're all constrained to equality. And so this is the most restrictive model. So um, if I, if I uh, go to um, view text, um, you'll notice that uh, under model fit, we have the fit statistics for each of our models. So you can see that we have unconstrained structural weights, structural covariances, structural residuals. And so you can see 
that um, really as we impose more constraints, um, the uh, chi-square uh, test value is increasing across those. So um, you can see that uh, you know all of the models were significant, which is not a big surprise. We had a pretty large uh, sample size being represented here. Um, but you can see there's the chi-square degrees of freedom ratio. Um, we have the CFI for all of the different models. You can see the CFI values are decreasing uh, as we impose more equality constraints. TLI, same thing, and, and so forth. Look at the RMSCA, you can see that, um, you know, basically they were all, for all models, um, above uh, uh, values that are preferable um, in terms of uh, fit. So when we look under estimates, you can see, um, you know, we have our regression weights. These are the unstandardized coefficients and significance levels. And if we go down here and click between the two groups, we have the white Canadian group and the native Canadian groups. And so you can see um, that right there. You can also see, notice too, that uh, the program by default is assigning uh, labels um, for each of the parameters. So you can see that like we have B3, and this is for group one, which is the white Canadians, B3 for group two, which is the native Canadians. Um, over here, uh, you can see uh, CCC, which is just basically our covariance for the uh, between these two variables for the white Canadian group, and then uh, adding in the underscore two for the native Canadian groups. So you'll notice then that when you look at the uh, estimates, they all have labels, and so you can see in the white Canadian group, the uh, under you, we have an underscore one for each of the parameters. For the native Canadians, we have the underscore uh, two for each of the parameters. Um, if we look at the uh, model comparison, you can see that we have a model comparing um, just the structural weights model where we constrain the path coefficients to be uh, equal between the two groups. Um, you know, basically this is a chi-square difference test testing the decrease in fit between uh, the structural weights model uh, in relation to the unconstrained model. So basically um, what we have in this case is just taking uh, the structural weights chi-square subtracting the unconstrained um, uh, the chi-square from the unconstrained model and we get the difference and also the, the difference in degrees of freedom is um, you know the 10 that you see right here. So if this um, if this uh, p-value right here is significant, that means that we have a significant decrease in fit from uh, when we um, impose equality constraints on our uh, path coefficients. The next one is comparing the structural covariances model, which incorporates this model right here. Um, and you can see that this is a dec decrease in fit relative to the unconstrained model. But then also we could, we could look at the decrease in fit from uh, by imposing um, uh, the structural covariances uh, on top of the structural weights. And so this is basically a comparison between um, you know, this model right here, structural covariances, and the structural weights model. So this is assuming the structural weights model. So you can see there was a decrease in fit. And then the last one you can see is just comparing the structural um, residuals model to the structural weights model. Um, and if I wanted to compare this one against the unconstrained model, there's a, there, there's a significance test there. So we're mainly going to be focusing in on just looking at the structural weights model and really trying to identify sources of non-invariance uh, between the two groups in terms of the path coefficients. So, um, you know, in my previous uh, video, I showed you one, one strategy that you, you could adopt which was to uh, go under uh, the manage models option and you know if you click on each of these right here you can see that you have different sets of parameters that are being constrained so the structural weights model you can see uh, all of the path coefficients are being constrained to equality and so uh, you know one option if you uh, the more painful option is just to create new models and go bit by bit and uh, essentially uh, constrain a given parameter to equality. So like uh, this would be uh, B1 which would be essentially uh, this path right here so uh, constraining uh, the uh, white Canadian and native Canadian groups to equality with respect to this regression coefficient. Uh, notice that I mean this is a model name so I could have named this anything I could have called this B1 
constrained or, or whatever. It doesn't really matter. Um, it's just the name. So, you know, one option is to, to literally go through and you can basically just kind of uh, copy and paste these in and then, and then just kind of cut out what is not um, going to be constrained. And so, you know, typically we just go, you know, parameter by parameter constraining um, a given uh, parameter and then uh, comparing uh, that constrained model against the unconstrained model. So we could do this, um, you know, all day long with respect to uh, each of the individual parameters. So, you know, there's, uh, you know, kind of constraining the uh, B3. Uh, I'm just going to constrain B4 right here. We could do that. And, uh, and so forth. So uh, just kind of continuing on, there's B5. And uh, B6. And B7. So there are a lot of parameters in this particular uh, demonstration. So it takes a, a couple of minutes to go through. Uh, using this particular strategy. There's B8. And I'm going to show you a quicker approach to this and you're probably going to be asking yourself why did you bother showing me how to do it this way and it's just to kind of really highlight what the process is, is really doing. Um, so that's the reason why so it's, it's not to be uh, arbitrary about it. Um, so there's B10. So now I'm going to close this out and when I run the analysis um, you know, now you can see all the B1s through B10, and if I look in the um, output file under model fit, you, you can see that all of these models uh, with uh, these different parameters being constrained, the degrees of freedom is, um, you know, 9, um, and essentially, we, we're essentially, um, we have each of these models incorporate one constraint, rel and um, there you go, and so, uh, if we go into model comparison though, we can, you know, we have the chi-square test. So there's the original uh, comparison of the structural weights model against the unconstrained model. And you could, again, that was sig significant. So there was a significant decrease in fit when we uh, constrained all of our path coefficients to equality. And so if we go parameter by parameter, you can see if we constrain B1, we, we see that there's not a significant decrease in fit. So that would argue then that we can relax the equality constraint and assume uh, that um, that we basically have, um, or excuse me, uh, the fact that this is um, non-significant actually means that the parameter is, uh, is, should be treated as invariant between the two groups. Um, so, you know, this one right here we would assume is going to be invariant. Uh, between the two groups because again this is non-significant. B2 you see uh, that we had a significant uh, decrease in the chi-square value uh, relative to the unconstrained model when we um, constrained B2 to equality. So what that would tell us then is that this parameter right here is non-invariant between um, between the two groups. When we look at B3 you can see that this was non-significant and that's going to actually tell us then that we have um, invariance uh, with respect to this parameter between the two groups. Looking at B4, you can see it's kind of a near significance, suggesting that maybe there's some uh, non-invariance uh, non uh, there. Um, when we look at B5, you can see that it was significant at the 0.05 level, suggesting that there's non-invariance. Uh, when we look at B6, uh, maybe some indication of some non-invariance, although it's kind of near significant. Uh, B7 through B9, you can see, would be all treated as invariant. And then B10, uh, you know, is kind of near significant, suggesting um, um, some evidence of, um, of non-invariance. So really, the, the model, the, the parameters that are most evidencing um, non-invariance are B2, um, you know, perhaps B4, B5, definitely. B6 and uh, B10. So, um, in this case, you know that's that's one way that we can do this. So, a much shorter way, a much less painful way, is instead of uh, going through and using the manage groups, uh, manage models option in the way that I just did. Uh, what we could do is uh, just click on analysis properties and click on critical ratios for differences. And uh, when we do that, I'm going to click on calculate estimates. And when I go here, um, 
now notice you'll notice uh, you'll see that we still have the, all the model comparisons uh, as before but when we look at the individual uh, comparisons right here these are pairwise parameter comparisons and essentially you've got um, you know you, you can see right here you've got CCC one underscore one B one uh, underscore one so this is uh, the parameter one uh, within our model and so you know if you go back here and look at it it's uh, essentially uh, capturing um, you know the, the relationship here between um, conflict and the symbolic variable and so you know if we look at our uh, output oops right here uh, we have B11 and if we go down and we look at B12 this is a critical ratio, all right? So this is basically comparing the two groups. This is basically a Z value. So, you know, when you look at this and it says critical ratios for difference between parameters, you're comparing uh, the uh, path coefficient in group one against the path coefficient in group two. And so uh, basically if we adopt a conventional uh, 0.05 thre uh, threshold for a two-tailed test, uh, basically, any any critical ratio that falls between negative 1.96 and uh, positive 1.96 would be deemed as um, as non-significant. So, in other words, that would indicate that there's a non-significant difference between the groups in terms of that um, that path coefficient. So, in this particular demonstration here, uh, once again, we see that when we compare B11 and uh, B12 right here there's no difference between the groups. When we look at B21 and B22 down here, there's a critical ratio and that falls outside of that negative 1.96 to positive 1.96 range. When we look at 31 and uh, 32 down here, there's no difference. Uh, when we look at 41 and 42, there's uh, no difference. Uh, when we look at 51 and 52, there's evidence of, of a difference. Um, when we look at 6162, no difference. 7172, 8182, 9192, and then 10, 10 Nevertheless, um, remember that several of these were near significant when we used the, um, uh, when we went uh, parameter by parameter um, in our previous analysis. So remember that uh, we had several near significant um, differences. So we had it for uh, we had B4 that was kind of in the in the near significant range, uh, and then B6 as well, and then B10. Uh, so if we look, you know, kind of going back just for a comparative sake, um, if we go back to the uh, model comparison, remember that you know we had you know there's the B2 right there, there's the B4 that was that near significant right there, um, there was B5 significant B6, and then B10. So um, so at any rate, uh, this was a much more painful process. You don't actually have to, to go through all of that. Um, it's, you know, if you basically just go uh, in here and just go to multiple group analysis, I'm just going to reset it here. And so everything's reset with just these models being specified. And if I click on uh, this button and ask for critical ratios for differences and calculate estimates, then um, you know you can basically look at model comparison and look at the structural weights model, see if there's a significant decrease in fit as a result of forcing the uh, path coefficients to equality, and then you can go under the uh, parameter comparisons option and look at um, you know each of the individual path coefficients. Again, there's B1 and uh, B2, B2, uh, uh, you know B21 and B22 and, and so forth. So you can do it either way, um, but um, this is obviously a lot quicker and um, so there you go. So that concludes this demonstration.